Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of College and Career Pathways, where every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m., we provide you with information on various colleges and universities, financial aid resources, training schools, technical programs, skilled trade professions, employment opportunities, career exploration, and career readiness skills, all designed to help you make the best career decisions possible. I'm Tony Curitin, your host, and today we will be talking with Allison Wright. She is a sports manager for Little Caesars Arena, and she's going to be talking about uh, careers in sports management, how you get into it, um, the rigors, the rewards, all of that good stuff. Welcome, Allison. We are so glad to have you. Thank you, Tony. I'm glad to be here with you guys. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen real quick. Good deal. All right. Can you see that, Tony? No. How about now? There we go. There we go. Cool. Um, so thanks again, Tony. I'm Allison Wright. I'm a guest strategy manager for Olympia Entertainment, the Detroit Tigers and the Detroit Red Wings. So We'll hop into all that in just a minute, but I kind of want to uh, start where my story started. So um, I've always been a fan of sports. I've always gone to Pistons and Red Wings games and um, Detroit Tigers games and concerts. Um, so I like to, to joke that I grew up going to these types of events and um, that's still what I'm doing today, going to Tigers games and Pistons games, depending on the day um, and Red Wings games. So um, I started my career, if you will, by going to Central Michigan. So I've got a pretty picture of CMU in the fall there. Um, when I first got to CMU, I thought I really wanted to study international business. So I went there, I started in the business school, started taking business courses and realized that just was not for me. Um, after that, I started studying um, Spanish for business. And I love speaking Spanish. Um, I, I learned it in middle school and high school, and I, I thought I wanted to continue on that path and maybe still work in international business, but do it from the perspective of um, being a Spanish speaker. But I quickly realized that I'm not a fan of writing papers in English. Um, so I really wasn't a fan of writing papers in Spanish. Um, so I, I quickly then after found the sport management program at CMU. So um, it's a program that I had no idea existed. Uh, someone in one of my other classes, I heard them speaking about it and I quickly write, hopped right into that program and really learned that that's what I was passionate about. Um, I'll go get into my career in just a little bit, but I had done a little bit of work already in the sport industry. So um, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So, um, and then I minored in business administration because I knew I still wanted to work on the business end of sport management. Um, and then I had a professor that really strongly believed in me and believed in my skills, um, who really persuaded me to go into the master's program at CMU for sports administration. So um, I spent another year and a half in Mount Pleasant to uh, get my sport administration degree. So now let's hop into where I've been in my career. So as I mentioned, I kind of started my career in sport management when I was a freshman in college. So my freshman year, after my freshman year of college, I was really, really fortunate to have gotten an internship with Palace Sports and Entertainment. So the Palace of Auburn Hills is where the Detroit Pistons used to play. Um, once upon a time, we had a WNBA team, a women's basketball team called the Detroit Shock. And then um, we also managed the uh, DT Energy Music Theater, which is an amphitheater in Clarkston. It holds about 15,000 guests. And we managed a property called Meadowbrook. Um, so I, I really learned during that internship that that is the place that I wanted to be, which funny enough, that organization meshed with the organization I'm currently with. And that's still where I'm working today. But there were a lot of other parts of my journey um, that really got me to where I am today, including all these other brands and organizations that you see on the screen. So I'll kind of just hop through what I did at each of those to kind of get to where I am today. Um, with the Great Lakes Loons, I interned in their uh, business operations part of their organization. So I did everything from help with fundraisers, helped with um, where players were going to stay. Um, the Great Lakes Loons is a minor league baseball team. I should probably share that as well. 
Um, they're part of the, the Dodgers organization, but they're in Midland, Michigan. So it's a very small organization, um, but it's tied in with the Dow Corporation, which is a giant company um, across the world. So really great organization. Um, I work for CMU Athletics, so for their athletic department, helping them with customer service. They didn't have any type of customer service program when I got there. Um, so I helped build their customer service program um, and implement it and train the other students on just the basics of cu customer service, which starts off with just listening. <laughs> so um, after that, I was finished with my master's degree and I moved to Orlando, Florida to work for ESPN Wide World of Sports and run Disney. So if you're an NBA fan and you've heard of the bubble um, that they had last season, that is where the bubble was, was ESPN Wide World of Sports. So they also have what's called Run Disney, which is a um, endurance brand, it's called. So they have half marathons, marathons, 5Ks, 10Ks. People from around the world come to Walt Disney World to run miles and miles through um, all the different theme parks. So at that same time, um, I started working for the Orlando Magic part-time. Um, I worked with them just as a game day colleague, a game day employee, I would work at one of the um, like restaurants or club spaces that they have there. So um, I think that was really pivotal in the role that I play today um, because I lead people who, uh, I manage people who were in those same types of positions. And it really gives me a great perspective on how to coach them um, and how to help them understand how to do their job better because I was in their shoes before as well. Um, I spent some time with ESPN as well. So ESPN is based in Bristol, Connecticut, which is a very small town on the East Coast. Um, and they've got an organization of about 8,000 employees. So anybody who was at ESPN, either in Bristol, Connecticut or New York or LA, um, that wanted to do anything with Walt Disney World or at Walt Disney World, uh, myself and my leader were the team that they would talk to to then have their events at Walt Disney World um, and vice versa. If anybody at Walt Disney World wanted to have an event with ESPN or have a commercial for ESPN um, uh, or put one of their commercials on ESPN, my leader and myself were the people that they would talk to. So that was a really fun job. Um, pretty much anywhere you go, anything you do throughout your day, you see ESPN or Disney somewhere. Um, so it was a really cool opportunity to work with those different brands and, and um, the different employees across the country for those, those groups. Um, after that, I continued working at the Walt Disney World Resort on a special project called the Invictus Games. So the Invictus Games is um, an adaptive sport competition for um, wounded warriors. So it's Prince Harry's version of like the Olympics, but for uh, wounded veterans. So that was a really, really cool experience to meet people from literally across the globe who have all served their countries um, compete in sports. So that was a really fun project. Um, but after that, I was really lucky to be able to come back to the Palace of Auburn Hills and the Detroit Pistons for what I found out after I got back would be the last season of the Palace of Auburn Hills. So, um, after that, I started working, after we closed the palace down, I started working for Olympia Entertainment, which is the, the company that runs Little Caesars Arena. So there I um, was a guest experience manager. So that means I led a bunch, a lot of our frontline employees who work events. So if you ever come to a Pistons game or a Red Wings game and you see uh, the person that takes your ticket or the person that helps you go through um, the metal detector when you come in, or the person that shows you where your seat is. I led that group of people, um, not only for Little Caesars Arena, but for um, Michigan Lottery Amphitheater, Meadowbrook, and DT Energy Music Theater. So right before the pandemic hit, I was able to switch roles one more time um, so I'm still working for Little Caesars Arena and uh, the Red Wings and those amphitheaters that I just mentioned, but I'm doing it in a little bit of a different way, um, which you'll, you'll hear about when I talk about um, the, in the day of my life. But um, I also now work with and for the Detroit Tigers um, and the Fox Theater. So that is 
kind of a, a quick catch up on where I've been throughout my career and kind of all the different experiences that I've had that have really helped me in the role that I'm in now. So now we'll hop into what I do now. Um, so a day in my life, I love to use this picture because people who, uh, when people think about working in sports and entertainment or people think about working for a basketball team, they think that you're just hanging out with the players all the time um, at practice, watching them, you know, kicking it with them. And that's not the case. <laughs> this is a snapshot of an opportunity that I had that was a once in a lifetime opportunity to hold two NBA uh, trophies, championship trophies. Um, but that is not what it's like every day. So I, I do that a bit in jest because that's, that's not what it's like every day. Um, so there are kind of three before I go forward, there are kind of three facets of, of what I do. So there's a piece that I do that I'm really passionate about. Um, I do a lot of continued learning and then connecting with colleagues or my fellow employees. So I'll talk about pursuing my passion. Um, in the position that I'm in right now as a guest strategy manager, my, um, the biggest part of my role is to help all the other parts of the business do the best job possible. So whether that's finding easier ways for them to do things or better ways for them to do things or doing research on what other organizations or um, NBA venues, NHL venues, MLB venues, uh, other theaters, other amphitheaters, looking at what they're doing in their business uh, for their guests or for their fans and bringing it that, that back to my teams to let them know, hey, the, um, the team in Boston has seen great success with using this platform in order for their fans to connect with them by text during our games. Have we looked at that? What would the cost be? Let's price it out and let's see how we can implement that here to create a better guest experience. Um, or when it comes to the employee experience, looking at um, doing surveys of all our employees and seeing what they're really enjoying and what's really um, the worst part of their day, and then trying to fix that and make that worst part of their day a more enjoyable experience for them. Um, another part of what I do is I recognize the hard work and the impact of our employees, whether that's in the surveys that our guests share with us after an event, or if that is um, catching them in the act of doing something great, you know, helping people get uh, replacement soda and popcorn that they accidentally dropped on the ground, um, or recognizing that it's a child's first time at one of our venues and giving them a first game certificate. So recognizing the hard work of our employees is another big part of what I do. Um, I work across a lot of different departments within our organization to plan and host events at our facilities. So um, whether that's, again, looking at different ways of maybe it's getting guests in and out of our building saying, okay, this entrance is good for this purpose, but what if we shifted people to a different entrance? So they had a different experience when they parked and when they entered. So really working with all of our departments from corporate partnership, um, ticket sales, security, event operations, um, facility operations, lo looking at, um, at how each of those groups are impacted by those decisions and making the best uh, decision for the fan and for the business. Um, foster a, a culture of excellence. So I, I, say often that my job is to help people get to the next level. So we don't want to be good. We want to be great. And after we're great for, you know, a minute or two, then let's take it to excellent and just continue to climb and climb and climb and be really uh, the best organization that we can be, the best colleagues that we can be, um, and the best sports teams and um, entertainment facilities that we, we can be. Um, create opportunities to learn and grow. So I do a lot of looking at what employees need to know within their, their job. So maybe it's learning about a new ticketing platform. I take that opportunity to create videos um, or to create training materials for them so that they can do the best job possible through knowledge and, and understanding and really breaking it down for them. Um, and then the last piece that I have here is I lead the guest communications team. So if you were to call in to Little Caesars Arena right now, or you were to email in, I lead the team that would answer you, answer the phone call or would answer your email that you write in. So that's one part of what I do. Um, 
the next piece that I'll talk about is continued learning. So I, every day I'm listening to one or all of these podcasts or reading emails from one or all of these uh, uh, content uh, creators. So I've listed a couple different podcasts that I really like here for you guys. Um, NPR up first tells me first thing in the morning what I need to know for the day, what's going on in the world. Um, Code Switch talks about culturally what's happening in the world. A lot of times America or in the world. Um, the CX or Customer Experience Leader podcast. That's one to, to learn about what organizations are doing across the industry when it comes to customer experience. Um, and it's wild. The things that are being done in customer experience across the, all industries is, is fascinating to learn about. Um, morning brew and, and snacks are a little bit more about finance and business. And um, just, I'd like to keep a pulse on those things. Daily Detroit talks about all things Detroit, what's going on in the city. I live in the city, so it's really important for me to understand what is going on in the city. Um, you know, in pre-COVID times where the hot new restaurants were, but then also what the political uh, landscape is looking like and things that I need to know from a community impact aspect. Um, SBJ on PACS is an industry, a sports industry podcast. Um, Sport Business Journal is what SBJ stands for. So they do a lot of... Um, my job for me because they kind of aggregate all the cool and hip and happening things in the sport industry and package it up and deliver that to professionals like myself. And then um, Sports Biz Tips from Chips is actually a podcast that I co-host. Um, so I connect with fellow Chippewas, uh, Central Michigan alumni who work in the sport industry and I learn about their career path, kind of what I'm sharing with you guys today. Um, I'm on the other side of the table um, interviewing people about their experiences and how they got where they are to try and do the same kind of thing that I'm doing today, help people understand how people got to um, where they are and what made them successful and what advice they have for people. So shameless plug on that. But if, if you like what you hear today <laughs> um, and you really think that sports business is for you, and I, I'd encourage you to listen to that just to get more insight and perspective on all the different jobs that um, are in the sports business. So. One other huge facet of what I do every day is connecting with my fellow colleagues. Um, so this is a, a group of photos of some of my uh, people that were closest to me during the pandemic um, that I saw almost every day and spent a lot of time with um, that I haven't seen in quite a while, but it's still a big part of my job to see how all these people's lives are going um, overall, but also how it pertains to how, it go how, it, how it's going at work. Um, like I said, what, what challenges are you having? What could I do that would make your job even just a little bit easier? Um, I really spend a lot of time connecting with all of them to understand what I can do to help them help our guests have better experiences with us. So, um, and I'll kind of just go through all the different positions that you see or all the different jobs. Um, so we'll start with, uh, we'll just start right in the middle. So the gentleman in the blue hat um, he's one of our parking attendants. So we have a ton of parking lots and parking garages all around the city. Um, so he's a parking attendant. And then Kristen is below him to the right. She's one of our box office ticket sellers. So if you go to LCA or the Fox to buy tickets, you may see Kristen. Um, the gentleman below her to the left is in our conversions crew. So if you've ever wondered, how does it go from ice to a basketball court in 24 hours or less? Uh, he's part of the team that makes that switcheroo. It's like a giant puzzle. Um, and then below him to the right, that is um, a colleague named Johnny, and he works security. So right there, you can't really tell, but a player is walking by. So he's just making sure that anybody that hops out toward the players uh, does so safely. And again, these are all pre-COVID times pictures. I'll just share that with you guys. Um, and then below him to the... Um, to the left is an usher. So again, someone that will take your tickets or show you where your seat is. Um, to the left of that, those ladies uh, actually work for Motor City Casino Hotel. So that's another part of our entertainment group that I didn't really talk about, but um, yeah, Motor City Casino Hotel is part of our um, umbrella of companies that you could work at. Above them um, is a young lady who works at the Fox Theater as an usher. Um, so just another opportunity, a position um, at the beautiful Fox Theater. To the left um, is a gentleman, another usher, talking to some guests in their seats during the game. Above that is um, a dear friend of mine, Damien, um, or um, uh, 
Damon, if you were to go to a Pistons game or even watch a Pistons game on TV pre-COVID times, you would see him uh, right center court, uh, making sure no one runs onto the court. So um, he's someone who I haven't seen again in a long time because we haven't had any fans. So he hasn't worked very much. Um, but if you ever do watch a game, look for him. He'll be center court. And then um, last but not least, Matthew, he's one of the concierge on the team that I used to lead. Um, but he helps people in the suites uh, get to the right, get to the right suite. Um, and also in our private clubs, he checks, checks tickets and looks at your wristband in our private clubs. So those are kind of a, a short list of the many positions that we have at our organization um, that all have a huge impact on the guest experience. So that is the, the short of my career and my education and what I do every day. So, yeah. Well, that was a lot, very a lot. informative. <laughs> yeah. And interesting and um, like yourself, I am a forever learner as well. Yeah. And so as you're speaking, I'm like, oh, I'd be interested in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you guys have any questions for Allison? Allison, do you do anything with season tickets? Um, I myself don't, but I have partners um, that are the specialists in season tickets. So I work with them day in and day out if we're having challenges um, or if I have a guest concern that gets to me that I know that the person's a season ticket holder, I um, share their information with them, but I don't directly do much with season tickets. How has that been affected with the pandemic? I would think that that would put a real dent in things. Yeah, so it's kind of different depending on the organization, um, whether it's Pistons, Red Wings, or Tigers. So across the board, big picture, like I said, it's different in every organization, but for the most part, what they've done is they've given people the opportunity to just keep their money on, on the account and not get tickets if they don't want them. Um, so thankfully right now with the Tigers, if people do have season tickets, we are able to have enough fans of the games uh, that all the season ticket holders are able to um, have tickets. But at the Pistons and the Red Wings, that's not the case because we can only legally have 750 fans um, at each game, which we have way more season ticket holders than that. Um, so yeah, the salespeople have had to have some really tough conversations with people and let them know um, that they may get some tickets to some games this year, but I think for the most part, they're just having people keep the money on their accounts. And then when we have a normal season, their funds will just go toward their season tickets for, for that time. Allison, we have a question in the chat. Um, one of our students want, wants you to go over again. What did you major in when you yeah. were in college? Let's see. So I did, it was called, um, at the time it was called sports studies, but um, now it's called sport management. So um, CNU actually has a really good program for sport management. Um, a lot of experiential learning, which if, you're like me, you learn by doing, um, and they have a lot of experiential learning opportunities. Um, you have to put on your own events. You have to um, get a lot of internship and what they call field study experience. So you have to go into organizations and spend time learning from those organizations in order to get credit in order to graduate. So yeah, so I studied sport management and then um, my master's is in sport administration. And those are really, um, umbrella terms. So like with a sport administration degree, you can be a coach for any sport. You can be an athletic trainer. There's other skills that you need in order to be an athletic trainer. But a lot of my uh, colleagues in that program were athletic trainers or strength and conditioning coaches, or like I said, coaches in general. Um, and it's just kind of an umbrella term for anything in the sport business, you know, um, if you want to be an agent, you could get that degree before you get your law degree. Um, if you want to be in ticket sales or you want to be in corporate partnerships, um, really in the podcast that I have, I talk to people who do broadcast media who got this degree. 
um, people who do graphic design that got this degree. So uh, communications, again, ticket sales, all those things. Um, you can do a ton of different things with that degree. It's just kind of what you find that you're passionate about that gets you into kind of the, the specific job that you, you have. We have another question in chat, Allison. They wanted to know who is the most interesting athlete you've met in your career? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I would say um, I've met two that are pretty uh, interesting and unique. So Dennis Rodman, I've met when I was much younger. Um, <laughs> he was too much younger. Um, so he's pretty interesting. And then uh, I don't know as though you'd classify this person as an athlete, but I did meet Prince Harry um, when I worked his event in Orlando. So I've seen him run. I mean, he is athletic. Is he an athlete? I don't know. Um, but yeah, those are probably the two most interesting people that I've met. So Allison, can you obtain a career in sports management through either an associate's degree or a certification, or do you have to have a bachelor's degree? Yeah, so it would depend on what you want to do. Um, I think we have a very robust technology team, um, information technology team, and I know that they do a lot based off um, certificates. So I would say that that is, if you're interested in IT, that that's one route that you could take. Um, as far as associate's degrees, I'm, I'm not totally sure. Um, there's so much in the sport management um, industry though, and so much of it is based on the experience that you have. So if you started today as an 18 year old, as an usher at one of our facilities, and you really excelled throughout your time doing that, you would be able to work up, work your way up um, into leadership positions. It's kind of just based on your work ethic um, and, and what you're willing to put into it and um, how you do at that job. Good deal. Did you have any mentors? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I would say at every step of the way, I had different uh, mentors, where I, whether I realized it or not. Um, when I was in college, I had some professors and also some leaders that were um, really pivotal in getting me to where I needed to go, um, whether that was believing in me um, fiercely and going to bat for me at times, or it was just uh, directing me in uh, a new or different uh, field or learning about new or different things or challenging me in new or different ways. Um, when I was in college, I had a, a professor who wanted me to speak at a conference, um, an international conference. And I had, as a 21 year old at the time, I'd never spoken at a conference, let alone an international conference, let alone um, on a different continent. <laughs> so he, uh, he really coached me and encouraged me to step outside of my box and do the research needed to speak at that conference, but then also uh, speak at that conference. Um, and I, I also throughout the rest of my career had leaders who um, taught me totally different things. I had a leader who, um, and a mentor who um, I'd never worked in the field that she had worked in before. She was in marketing and sales um, and I had been in operations. Um, you know, I'd been working boots on the ground with, with the guests and she was up in the, you know, the C-suite rubbing elbows and, um, you know, doing all the, the fun things up there. So she really helped switch my mindset into learning, um, into learning how the other side of the business operations or the, the business, the sports business world lives. Um, and she was fierce about it and she was direct about it. And she really put me in a, a sales and marketing boot camp so that I was able to honestly do the job that I have now um, because I can kind of code switch, if you will, and go from a marketing perspective to a business uh, operations perspective, to a team perspective, to um, uh, the conversions or the facility operations perspective. I kind of became a jack of all trades. Um, through my learning with her that at the time was not, uh, like I said, she was fierce um, and she was pretty cutthroat. And 
it was a hard kind of wake up call to get into that part of the business, but uh, it really helped me become who I am today and be successful in the position that I'm in today. Good deal. We have a question in the chat that asks, what are the downfalls or the cons of your position and what are the best things about your job? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the pitfalls, um, it's not a very, it's not a, a secret that while the sport industry is fun, it does not pay very well. <laughs> so um, it pays okay. Like I, you know, I'm not, you know, I can survive on what it is, but it's just, I look at my friends that are in other industries um, and they get compensated a lot more than I do. But Part of the uh, part of working in this industry is that you are able to go to. I'm able to not go to. I work a Pistons game tonight, and I'll work a Tigers game tomorrow. That I'm part of that environment. I'm seeing what's going on. I'm just being part of that energy, which is really really fun. And a lot of people want to do it, so that's why they can pay us less because tons of people want to do it. A little supply and demand uh, situation. Um, but the best parts of my job, I would say are um, being able to be in those environments, but then also um, working with, uh, I would say working with so many people from all over the world um, at all different capacities. And then working with, um, I really enjoy working with the NBA. Um, I think that they're a very progressive brand um, that I, I really align myself with a lot of what they do across business and across um across business and across um you know politics and social justice and they're also they always want to be the best and they always want everyone within their organization to be the very best which um i would say i'm a little bit cutthroat like that too because i always like to be the best um and i like to keep pushing forward and i really like working with the nba because that's how they represent themselves as well Allison, what would be the characteristics you would say that a person would need to go into sports management? What kind of mm. person does that individual have to be? Yeah, so it, it really depends based on what part of sport business you want to be in. Um, I think having a lot of grit and a really strong work ethic are going to be your top two um, or one uh, way to succeed in this industry. Everyone that I've seen that has been successful has been an incredibly hard worker. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, up all hours of the night or uh, never leaving work, but they, they find ways to continually improve their business and the lives of those um, around them and the bottom line, of course, uh, financially. But um, people who work very smart or very hard, but also very smart um, and who have that grit to continually push forward and make a difference on the business and the people around them. Okay, good deal. And so if you were a student enrolling your freshman year and you're interested in sports management which direction should they go should they study business should they mm -hmm. study sports which direction should they go into yeah so i think that also kind of hinges on what part of sport business they want to be in or what part of sports they want to be in um, but I think if, if you know you want to be in sports, I think going into sport management is the way to go because from there um, you can learn about all the different jobs that are within the sport industry. Um, if you know that you really want to be in the sport industry, but you want to be like a CEO um, or you want to be an uh, executive within the sport industry, um, getting, you know, your MBA, your, your master's in business degree, I think would be a really valuable thing to do um, once you finish your undergrad, you know, and if you do an undergrad in maybe finance or an undergrad in, um, or even just in, in business, I think that those are two, if you want to get to the very, very top, I would say that that's the right route to take. Um, but if you want to be a coach, maybe you're studying 
coaching. Um, they do have degrees in coaching. Um, so you can study coaching and sport management at the same time, you know, maybe minor in coaching or vice versa, major in coaching um, and get a minor in sport administration or sports business so that you, you know the uh, business side of sports, but you also know the psychology and um, the teaching and coaching side of sports as well. Um, and I think that probably just goes for all different facets of the sport industry. Um, if you want to be in sports broadcasting, then, you know, a journalism or a broadcast degree paired with a minor in sport management, I think that would be your right recipe there. So it kind of just depends on what part of the business you want to focus on. And I know you mentioned that you don't get a very lucrative salary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not getting personal, but, but what could a student expect to make range-wise, um, graduating from high school and going to college and getting their bachelor's degree and mm -hmm. going into sports management, what range, salary range, could they expect to um, get paid? Yeah, so starting right at like an entry-level position, mm -hmm. um, usually those are between like 30 and 40, I would say in this market, um, like in Detroit, you know, I can't, New York is totally different and, and LA is totally different, but in our market, between 30 and $40,000 a year is probably about where, where you'd start as an entry level position. And that does depend a lot on the experience that you've had. You know, if you've interned three or four places um, or you've had a part-time say coordinator position while you're, you're in college, that'll help you get farther ahead um, when it's time to get your, your first full-time job. Good deal. We have a question in the chat. She wants to know, what made you decide to go into this field? Mm -hmm. um, so when I was a freshman in, in college and I just finished up my freshman year and I had gotten the internship at the palace, um, I, I applied for that internship because I loved going to the palace. I loved going to Pistons games. Um, if I wasn't at you know, a dance class on a weeknight, I was at the Pistons game. Like that's just <laughs> how I lived my life. Um, so I loved going. So I, I knew that I wanted to make that part of my life, at least for that summer. Um, and I really didn't think that they were going to hire a freshman. Um, you know, usually internships are for juniors, seniors, somebody looking for a job. Um, so it was kind of just a shot in the dark. So long story short, I ended up getting that position. Um, and it was just, it was for me. It was just totally for me. Um, I did guest experience while I was there. Um, so that meant leading again, those ushers, those ticket takers, um, people who give you wheelchair escorts to your seat, uh, people who are helping resolve any challenges that you have while you're at the game. Um, after I did that internship, I just knew that that's, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and that's, I think why it was so hard for me to go back to college. Like I was ready to quit college and just stay there in that position for the rest of my life. Um, thankfully no one let me do that. My leaders there did not let me do that. They understood that that was not a realistic path to be on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, after that year, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I tried some other things. I tried like a digital marketing type of of gig um, and I worked some other jobs that I just, I wasn't passionate about. So when you know, you know, I guess. Good deal. Is this a, a career path that's in high demand? Um, do you ever have to concern yourself with uh, it drying up and you wind up having to change careers and going mm -hmm. in a different direction? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you this, I've been through two, uh, oh, I've been through one round of layoffs in my career, and I've been through one round of like a merger acquisition, and neither were easy, um, and I, they both ended up working out, I'm, you know, I'm where I am today because of those things, um, but they were really hard to go through, you know, to be at a company that you love and have such a passion for, and for them to tell you you've been cut. Like you, there's no job for you here anymore. It's heartbreaking. Um, it's very heartbreaking. Um, and then, you know, to be at an organization again, that you, you love and is like a part of who you are at the core. 
um, for them to say, hey, we're we're selling to this other organization or we're combining with this, this other organization, there will not be, there probably will not be a spot for you. That's also very heartbreaking. Um, but it's business, you know, the 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 layoffs happen because uh, long story short, ESPN, you know, everybody's watching sports and TV differently. Um, people aren't subscribing to giant cable packages anymore. They're going to Netflix and to Hulu. Um, and so as a part of that business, ESPN wasn't making as much money and they had to cut position. So it's business. You can't be mad at what they had to do. Um, and same with the other things. So I, everything's always ebbing and flowing and changing. Um, and in roles like mine, where I'm looking at the guest experience, um, I think things are getting a little bit harder for us because people pandemic aside, like that's a whole different, I'll talk in pre pandemic and then post pandemic times. Um, it's really easy for people to sit at home and watch a game on the big screen with their, you know, pop that's only 50 cents to a dollar and their popcorn that's only 50 cents to a dollar. Um, and it's a lot of money to come to a game and park and buy $10 pops and $10 popcorns. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we will see a shift in that, but I'm really hoping, and I believe that people won't ever stop coming to live sporting events or live concerts. Mm -hmm. um, our jobs will just look a little bit differently as they'll look a little bit different as we migrate from, um, you know, 20,000, 40,000 people stadiums to stadiums that are still the same size, just the seating looks different. You know, maybe we have more suites or we have seats that are spaced farther apart. Um, I think that we'll continue to have jobs in this in this field. It'll, they'll just look different. Good deal. Are there currently or any upcoming positions that will be available for entry level students in mm -hmm. high school at uh, Little Caesars Arena mm -hmm. or any yeah. other venues? Yeah, for sure. So. Um, at Little Caesars Arena, a lot of the jobs that we have, you do have to be 18 or older, um, but at our amphitheaters, so um, in Sterling Heights at Michigan Lottery Amphitheater, in Rochester at Meadowbrook Amphitheater, or Clarkston at DT Energy Music Theater, um, you only have to be 16 to work out there in our parking department, um, which is another good spot to, to get a start. Um, make some money. It's, it's not super hard work. You're parking cars. Um, uh, but it's still a good experience to have. Um, so then at our other venues, you do have to be 18 or older, but as soon as we uh, make our way out of this pandemic, we will for sure be hiring people. Um, you know, our, our workforce that we have is mostly part-time and they're people who, who need money. So since we haven't had any work for them, they've gone to work at Amazon or Kroger or um, other places that have had work for them in the meantime, and they may decide to come back or they may not decide to come back. Um, so yeah, we'll have positions open as soon as we get on the other side of this pandemic. So good deal. Do you guys have any other questions for Allison? No other questions. It was very informative. Thank you, Allison. Yeah, for sure. My pleasure. All right, then we will wrap this up. Thank you again, Allison, for joining us and sharing your experience and um, giving us some great tips and information on how to get into the career of sports management. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And thank you everyone for joining us um, on College and Career Pathways, and we will see you again on Wednesday. Everybody have a great week day rest of your day you too thank, thank you. you thank you so much bye bye. bye bye now